Bears Now is presented by Manscaped Ultra, the 5.0 Ultra. The Manscaped Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra as they continue to improve the best ball hair trimmer out there. The 5.0 Ultra is going to have your nuts feeling smooth, feeling great. Holiday season, no better time, uh, you know, to have a good time, if you know what I'm saying. All right, I'm Harrison Graham. Let's jump into today's show, which is round one draft targets. We're going to take a look at some players I would take with the number one overall pick, which the Bears currently have, and also some other players that I am interested in in the first round as well. But if you want more NFL draft coverage, rumors, draft targets, mock drafts, let us know. Easiest way you can let us know is by hitting that sub button. We're able to track how many new subscribers we get on a video. So if you want more draft content, go ahead and subscribe today. It's 100% free, free of charge. Okay, number one pick targets. You guys can probably guess the three players I would consider here, but we'll go one at a time anyway. Caleb Williams. Uh, Caleb Williams entered this college football season as the clear-cut number one overall pick. I still think he's the favorite for that, but it's not as clear as it once was. You look at the scouting profile I cooked up for him. Listed at 6'1", 215, a little undersized. I'll be curious to see what he measures at the combine. It wouldn't shock me if he was six foot flat. Six foot's fine. If he's under six foot, I'll be a little more concerned. But unlike Bryce Young, he has unreal arm talent and, and arm strength um, compared to a Bryce Young. And Bryce Young is much smaller than Caleb Williams. He's at his best outside of the pocket. He can really create and make throws on the run. Uh, he does need to improve in structure. Uh, which is where you occasionally see comparisons to Justin Fields. That's where he also uh, still has growth that he needs to uh, make in his game. And his biggest issue, similar to Justin as well, he's got a fumbling problem. 32 fumbles in three years, way too many. He hasn't lost all 32, but he's put the ball in harm's way with fumbling 32 times. Now, the good news is he doesn't throw many picks. Fumbling's a bigger problem for him. So uh, I like him. He has unbelievable arm talent. And uh, his improbability is second to none of any quarterback we've seen in a while. Uh, but there are faults to his game. He is not a flawless prospect, but he's very, very good. Uh, number two, Drake May. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of discussion around Caleb Williams and Drake May going forward. Dane Brugler has elevated May to his QB1, but he has acknowledged that Caleb Williams in NFL circles is still probably higher. Uh, but Drake May is more of your prototypical built quarterback, 6'4", 230. He looks more like 6'5", 225 to me. <laughs> so that's interesting. I'll be curious to see where he measures in at the combine as well. Very strong arm. Uh, he gets the Justin Herbert comparisons. They look the same when they throw the football. Just a rocket uh, rocket launcher, essentially, type of throw that they can make. Uh, he's dynamic in and outside of the pocket. I do think he's better in the pocket than Caleb Williams. Caleb's a little better outside of the pocket, but May is still terrific outside of the pocket. Accuracy dipped a bit this year, but North Carolina had some drop issues, uh, so I'm not too concerned about that. And I think the one thing, and Brugler has mentioned this as well when evaluating May, is he can be a little over-aggressive at times. Like, he has such a good arm that at times he will put the ball in harm's way. Like, Caleb's problem when is holding the ball too long. That's where he can get into trouble. Drake's problem is he almost trusts himself too much at times, which... I'd rather have that than be hesitant, to be honest. So uh, it's kind of pick your poison there when you're evaluating these two quarterbacks. But you look at the numbers this year, they're both very good. Their numbers overall were down from last year in terms of volume stats, but they're both good passers. They're both very strong-armed players. They're both very mobile. I don't get it twisted. Drake May can be a scrambler in the NFL. He will escape and he will rush uh, for first downs, and he will use his feet to run as well. We know Caleb Williams does that. Uh, they're both great prospects. They're not flawless. Um, you know, neither finished their college seasons at an unbelievable level, but I still think they played well. Uh, I think they're going to be two of the top three picks, if not the top two picks in this draft. Now, pick a QB prospect. Just leave Justin Fields out of it for two seconds. Between these two, who do you like better? You like Caleb Williams, type CW. You'd rather have Drake May, type DM. Just Talking about these two prospects, you don't even have to think of it in a Bears lens. Which quarterback do you like more? Let us know. CW for Williams or DM for Drake May. And then Marvin Harrison Jr. And I know some people might say, wait a second, you would take Marvin Harrison Jr. number one? If it came to it, yeah. I mean, I'd be cool with it. I mean, he is just – you want to talk about flawless? He's as close to flawless as you get as a prospect. I've said it for two months. He is the best player in college football. 
He's the best player in this draft. I don't see a scenario where he fails unless something off the field pops up. I, I really don't. He's six four. He's over 200 pounds. He can absorb contact. He can beat press coverage. He is fast enough uh, to beat man coverage. He can uh, find the right spots in the zone. He's an exceptional route runner. He's great after the catch. I think people are going to be surprised at his 40 speed. Oh, and by the way, he's productive as hell, whether it was with C.J. Stroud or with Kyle McCord, a much inferior talent at Ohio State. Touchdown machine, big play machine. Um, I'm cool with him number one overall. Now, in an ideal world, if you decide to keep Justin Fields and you land the number one overall pick, you'd rather trade down to two or three than take Marvin. But that may not happen. You may not have a team that sitting at two or three that will trade up uh, with you. And if Arizona's in the mix, they might take Marvin. So if the worst outcome is you land Marvin Harrison number one overall, like I I'm not going to complain about it. He he's an unbelievable talent. You pair him with DJ Moore. Uh, I, I, I just think this offense will continue to cook. So I'm with it. Uh, I like him a lot. A perfect world, Justin Fields balls out the rest of the season. You commit to him, and you find a way to get Marvin Harrison Jr. on your football team and continue to build this roster. That that would be the best scenario, in my opinion. All right, Manscaped. Zoom, 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 zoom. What is that noise? Well, that's what noise you're going to be making before you have a hell of a night, if you know what I'm saying. Trim those balls with the lawnmower. 5.0 Ultra, perfect sto sto stocking stuffer, if I could communicate, this Christmas season. Guess what? You stock your stuffing with uh, the Manscaped Lawnmower 5.0. You're going to stuff your, I'll let you fill in the blank of the rest of that sentence. Promo code BEARS20 at manscaped.com. Listen, you think I had a kid by accident? No, I didn't. Manscaped helped me out. Promo code BEARS20, the Lawnmower uh, 5.0 Ultra. It's just terrific. They continue to improve on their products. Uh, with their advanced skin care technology. Dual blade system with this bad boy now. It's waterproof now, not just water resistant. I mean, what else could you want, folks? Manscaped has it all. They've got other products too. I love their beard products as well. I use their uh, beard uh, balm every single morning before I come to work. Manscaped.com, promo code BEARS20. That's going to get you 20% off plus free shipping. It's manscaped.com. Uh, promo code BEARS20, link in promo code in the comments and in the description of this video. Okay, we're kind of going to go two at a time here. Olu Fashanu, Joe Alt. I wanted to bunch them together because same position, um, similar range of the draft. I think they could go as high as three, probably four, as low as seven or eight, uh, depending on how the draft plays out. Um, but you compare these two side by side, Joe Alt, and I'm not just saying this because of PFF, I, I, I actually do believe it. Joe Alt's had a better year this year. I'm not saying he's a better prospect. I think this year he has had a better season. Um, Olu struggled a bit against Ohio State and Michigan. Obviously, Penn State's top two uh, levels of competition this year. Joe Alt was rock solid all year. He really was. Um, Dane Brugler, who, again, I, really, I refer to him a lot because I trust his eye with this stuff. He said he's had the best – Offensive line tape he's seen in over five years. It's pretty meaningful. There's been a lot of good offensive linemen, tackles specifically, that have come out recently. One named Darnell Wright last year had awesome tape at Tennessee, and he's saying Joe Waltz is better. Uh, he's been better this season. Now, uh, Olu's probably a little more athletic. Joe Waltz, 6'8", 325, but he's plenty athletic. Um, this all comes down to how you feel about Braxton Jones. I like Braxton. He's a good player. He's above average. He's a starting caliber player. But if you think Alt or Olu's an all-pro – and they're sitting there when you pick, it's something to consider. It is. Um, maybe that's not fair to Braxton, but if you have two you know, potential all pros at your tackle positions, that's something to consider, uh, considering already having Darnell Wright. Uh, okay, Brock Bowers. We've talked about Bowers some, the tight end out of Georgia. And Harrison, you already have Cole Komet. Yes, but number one, especially if you keep this style of offense, whether it's with Getzey or someone else, kind of this – Shanahan tree system, you run a lot of two tight end sets. Brock Bowers is just an unbelievable player. I think after Marvin Harrison, he's the safest player in this draft. He is so explosive after the catch. He's a good, not great, but good enough blocker. Um, obviously, you would use him more as a receiving threat, but I just like vision. Like, what if you go Marvin Harrison, Brock Bowers, and your offensive skill players are DJ Moore, Marvin Harrison Jr., Cole Komet, Brock Bowers, Maybe you bring back Darnell Mooney in the slot and just roll with a similar rotation at running back. I mean, 
hello, add a center in free agency, and let's go cook. Brock Bowers is terrific. They use him on damn jet sweeps, guys. Like, he is so explosive in the open field. I love watching this kid play. He loves contact. He does not run out of bounds. Um, I'm excited to see how he plays the rest of the season and uh, obviously in the pre-draft process as well. So I would, I, I'm would i open to taking Bowers. I know it's not your top need, but in a world where more and more teams are running two tight end sets, he could absolutely help. And listen, um, it would help Cole Komet too. It could, lo it could lower his snaps just a touch. He's having to play almost every snap because uh, no offense to Robert Tunyon. He hasn't given you much. Mercedes Lewis is a nice blocker, but – you're not playing him much in passing down, so uh, bringing in a guy like Brock Bowers, I mean, that would be a game changer. Who is your favorite NFL draft prospect this year? Uh, I'd go Marvin 1, Brock Bowers 2. They're my top two guys. I, I think they're can't-miss prospects. I would be shocked if one of those guys busted, like legitimately shocked. So I'd go with those two. What say you? Let us know in the comments. Another guy I'm really liking is Leatu Latu. The edge out of UCLA. This guy's had an interesting story. Had to medically retire at Washington State. Got second and third opinions. Got cleared. Transferred to UCLA. In the last two years, he's been awesome. I mean, he's been really, really good. Uh, the production's been there. Uh, the P his PFF grade, and again, I don't – PFF's not the end-all be-all. But when you have a 95 overall grade, like, that is, that is pretty damn impressive. The production matches it. The tape matches it. Like – He's just so damn good, dude. He's strong. He's powerful. He's speedy. Uh, he can run through you. He can run around you. He's got an array of moves. The question for him is going to be medical. I mean, if he's cleared, he's easily the best pass rusher in this draft. I like Jared Verse. I like Dallas Turner. Latu's more talented. He just is. Um, so, you know, you pair a guy like that with Montez Sweat, hopefully the defensive tackle position, uh, maybe Dexter improves enough to where you're comfortable with him at that three tech. Maybe you go sign somebody. Uh, that's that's a that's a group that could really uh, take another step pretty quickly. And then one more I want to look at here is Malik Neighbors. I thought about Roma Dunze, the receiver out of Washington. He's very good too, but I like Neighbors more than – man, after Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors is my guy. Rolly's with me as well. The production's just insane. And it's not like production that you know is like empty stats. Like LSU is having to score a shit ton every week because their defense sucks. And they don't run gimmicky stuff. Like, yeah, they have spread concepts, but not like University of Tennessee, just crazy wide hash stuff that is so obviously gimmicky to inflate stats. Like Malik Neighbors is a big play machine. This draft is loaded with receivers, man. It really is. You got MHJ, you got Neighbors, you got Adunze. I still like Keon Coleman a lot out of Florida State. Uh, there's dudes, man. This is a much better receiver draft than it was last year. So even if you don't get MHJ, uh, maybe you trade down from your own pick, or maybe your own pick ends up being in like that like six to ten range, and Neighbors is there. I'd be cool with him. I think he's a plug and play starter in the NFL. Uh, maybe he's not a number one right away, but he absolutely has potential to be that guy. What is your dream NFL draft scenario? Maybe keep it to round one um, with the Bears' two picks. Currently one and four. That can obviously change, especially with your own pick here. Uh, but let us know what your dream NFL draft scenario is. All right, guys, appreciate everybody for tuning in to today's video. Again, if you want more draft content, subscribe. But we don't just do draft stuff. We do the latest news and rumors, injury updates during the current season, previews, post-game shows, live watch parties. We do it all. YouTube.com slash Bears Now.